Following his examination, the patent examiner rejected all 11 of the Bilski application claims, saying that the invention is not implemented in a specific apparatus and merely manipulates an abstract idea and solves a purely mathematical problem without any limitation to a practical application. Further, the examiner says, as a result of simply using an abstract idea to solve a purely mathematical problem, the invention is not directed to the technological arts. Following examination, an amendment, and office actions relating to the case, Bilski decided to appeal the decision of the examiner. The normal course which Bilski followed was to appeal from the examiner to the Board of Patent Appeals and Interferences, which is a tribunal within the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, which consists of three judges, all of whom hear the appeal and make decisions as to whether or not the examiner acted properly in rejecting the application. After hearing the case at the Board of Appeals and Interferences, the Board of Patent Appeals and Interferences affirmed the rejection, although on different grounds. The Board held that the examiner was mistaken in relying on a technological arts test, saying that case law does not support such a test. The Board further said that a claim that does not recite a specific apparatus may still be directed to patentable subject matter if there is a transformation from one state to another. According to the board, the Bilski claims did not involve any patent-eligible transformation. The board said that transformation of non-physical financial risk and legal liabilities of a commodity provider, the consumer, and the market participants is not patent-eligible subject matter. The Bilski claims only claim an abstract idea ineligible for patent protection the board further states that the Bilski process as claimed did not produce a useful, concrete, and tangible result. Remember that this is the test under the State Street decision, and for this reason as well was not drawn to patent-eligible subject matter. Having lost again at the Board of Appeals and Patent Interferences, Bilski chose to further appeal Decisions of the Board of Appeals and Patent Interferences can be further appealed to the United States Court of Appeals for the Federal Circuit, or CAFC. The Federal Circuit is unique among the Courts of Appeals as it is the only court that has this jurisdiction based wholly upon subject matter rather than geographic location. The Federal Circuit is an appellate court with jurisdiction given to hear appeals from certain administrative agencies and appeals arising under certain statutes. Among other things, the Federal Circuit has exclusive jurisdiction over appeals from the United States Patent and Trademark Office. The decisions of the Federal Circuit, particularly in regard to patent cases, are unique in that they are binding precedent throughout the United States within the bounds of the court's subject matter jurisdiction. Decisions of the Federal Circuit are only superseded by decisions of the United States Supreme Court, a review by the United States Supreme Court is discretionary, so Federal Circuit decisions are often the final word. Within the United States Court of Appeals, such as the United States Court of Appeals for the Federal Circuit, depending on the case, an on-bank hearing may be held. An on-bank hearing refers to the hearing of a legal case, such as the case of Bilski v. Kapos, where all judges of a court will hear the case, rather than a panel or subset of them. It's often used for unusually complex cases, or cases considered of unusual significance. As we stated before, the Bilski v. Kapos case is the first subject matter scope review for business method and process claims to occur before the Court of Appeals for the Federal Circuit since the cases of State Street Bank v. Signature Financial and AT&T Corporation v. XL Communications. Accordingly, it would be appropriate for Court of Appeals for the Federal Circuit to hear this matter as an on-bank hearing. The on-bank Federal Circuit upheld the rejection by the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office in a vote of 9 to 3. The majority opinion by Chief Judge Paul Michael characterized the issue as whether the claimed invention is a patent-eligible process, as the patent statute uses that term. While any series of actions or operations is a process in the dictionary sense of that term, the Court explained, the Supreme Court has held that the statutory meaning is narrower than the dictionary meaning, which forecloses a purely literal reading. 
patent eligible processes do not include laws of nature, natural phenomenon, or abstract ideas. The limiting legal principle applies not just to processes, but to anything on which a patent is sought. The court concluded that prior decisions of the Supreme Court were of limited usefulness as guides because they represented polar cases on the abstraction and concreteness spectrum. Nonetheless, a legal test could be distilled from them. A claimed process is surely patent eligible under Section 101 if, one, it is tied to a particular machine or apparatus, or two, it transforms a particular article into a different state or thing. The court then considered whether this two-branch test should be considered all-inclusive, that is, as stating indispensable conditions of patent eligibility. It concluded that the answer was affirmative, even though much of the language of the Supreme Court's patent eligibility cases was more reserved. Turning finally to Bilski's method, the court held it patent ineligible. First, the court said, Bilski did not argue that the rejected claims recited any specific or particular machine so that the court found it unnecessary to decide any issues relating to the machine implementation branch of the test. We leave to future cases the elaboration of the precise contours of machine implementation as well as the answers to particular questions such as whether or when recitation of a computer suffices to tie a process claim to a particular machine, said the court. Second, the court turned to transformation of articles from one thing or state to another. What is an article? Benson had made it clear that tanning hides, smelting ores, and vulcanizing rubber were all instances of transforming articles. This corresponded to the transformation test as the PTO had articulated it. One physical substance is transformed into a sec second physical substance. But what of electrical signals and electrical manipulated data, or even more abstract constructs such as legal obligations which the Bilski case involved. No Supreme Court precedents address such entities. Bilski's method was patent ineligible because it did not transform any article to a different state or thing. Legal obligations such as options and futures contracts and business risks cannot meet the test because they are not physical objects or substances, and they are not representative of physical objects or substances. However, to the extent that signals are involved and are transformed, they are not representative of any physical object or substance. Accordingly, Bilski's claim in entirely failed the transformation machine test. The Federal Circuit decision, in addition to the majority opinion, included a concurrence from Judge Dyke, a dissent from Judge Mayer, a dissent from Judge Newman, and most interestingly, for the purposes of the Supreme Court case, a dissent by Judge Rader. Judge Randall Ray Rader dissented on the ground that the majority should have said in a single sentence, because Bilski claims merely an abstract idea, this court affirms the board's rejection. He then complained that instead of doing that, the majority opinion propagates unanswerable questions. What form or amount of transformation suffices? What is representative of a physical object sufficiently linked to that object to satisfy the transformation test? What link to a machine is sufficient to invoke the or machine prong? What are the specific machines of Benson required or can a general purpose computer qualify? Judge Rader indicated his belief that nothing was wrong with patents on business methods or natural phenomena, so long as they are claimed to achieve a useful, tangible, and concrete result. It is interesting to note that since the Bilski decision, Judge Randall Ray Rader has been appointed Chief Judge of the Court of Appeals for the Federal Circuit. At the Court of Appeals for the Federal Circuit, the Bilski case was known as N. Ray Bilski. The discussion that follows relates to the appeal from the decision of the Federal Circuit in the case at the Supreme Court, Bilski v. Kapos, wherein Bilski seeks to have the United States Supreme Court overturn the Federal Circuit's decision in N. Ray Bilski. With the Court of Appeals for the Federal Circuit decision rendered, Bilski and Warsaw next chose to petition for a writ of certiorari to the United States Supreme Court. On June 1, 2009, the U.S. Supreme Court issued the writ of certiorari. The Supreme Court heard arguments on November 9, 2009. During the hearing, Justices Sotomayor, Kennedy, and Breyer were particularly active, closely followed by Justices Scalia and Ginsburg and Chief Justice Roberts. 
Throughout the hearing, the justices appeared to be struggling to achieve the right answers and were particularly sensitive to the consequences that their decision would have on various industries. The United States Supreme Court rendered a 9-0 decision in Bilski v. Kapos on June 28, 2010. To understand the decision, the opinions, and the result in the case, it's instructive to review the United States Supreme Court justices, including Chief Justice John G. Roberts, Jr., Associate Justice Antonin Scalia, Associate Justice Anthony M. Kennedy, Associate Justice Clarence Thomas, Associate Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Associate Justice Stephen G. Breyer, Associate Justice Samuel Anthony Alito, Jr., Associate Justice Sonia Sotomayor, and now-retired Associate Justice John Paul Stevens.